Welcome to Dashway Talks, a show powered by Dashway Consulting, a China-based strategic market research company founded in 2010. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm an order manager from Design Shiro and Associates. We are a professional service firm providing all kinds of market entry, accounting, tax, legal, and other advisory services for international investors who would like to conduct business in Asia. How does the new revenue standard affect enterprises in China? The new revenue standard, the revised CS14, could potentially lead to substantial changes to revenue recognition policies、um, of enterprises in China. So, applying the five-step method would require the company to review its contracts, to modify the revenue recognition process. And to update the internal control policies accordingly, and also it's very likely that the company needs to adjust the accounting information system. So also the company、um, would find that the financial statements、uh, will look very different. So the five-step revenue recognition model、uh, it alters the way revenue is being recognized. So it alters the timing and the amount of revenue recognition. So now you may need to recognize revenue earlier than it used to be and at a very different amount. So because of this, it's very likely that your financial statements will look different from before.、Um, your revenue figure could be different, and there could be some new balance. New balance sheet items such as contract assets and contract liabilities, and since the new revenue standard would affect your financial performance and financial position, it would result in some indirect impact. For example,、uh, it will affect your financial metrics or financial ratios when you calculate bank covenant. Um, it may affect your bonus plan if your bonus is calculated based on revenue, as well as、um, it will affect your ability to pay dividends. And finally, I think the new revenue standards definitely impose some challenges for accounting personnel in China.、Um, again,、uh, applying the new revenue standard would involve a great deal of. Accounting estimates and judgments. For example, you will have to estimate the expected value or the most likely amount of the variable consideration in order to determine what is your transaction price. And also, you will have to make a judgment as to what constitutes a separately identifiable performance obligation based on your own business model.、Um, actually, there are a lot of factors to consider. And if the standalone selling price is not available, which is very often the case when you try to allocate the transaction price to performance obligations, so if the standalone selling price is not available, then you will have to make an estimation in order to、um, allocate the transaction price, and you need to determine what kind of approach you need you would like to use. Anyway, to make these judgments and estimates, it's.、Um, Imperative for accounting personnel to understand the industry, to understand the business, and to understand how your products are integrated. That is the interrelationship among different products, and also understand each contract how they're structured, make consistent and viable estimation, and very importantly, finally be able to justify it. What types of businesses are the most affected by the new revenue standard? The new revenue accounting will affect different industry differently, and how the revenue standard will affect your company actually depends on the complexity of your contracts.、Um, so I will discuss two types of business:、um, the manufacturing business and the retail business, which I think are very much affected by the new revenue standard. But keep in mind that companies operating in other industries、uh, could also be affected if they contain similar terms or arrangements in their contract. So, about manufacturing business. So,、um, for manufacturing business, the new revenue standards now allow the capitalization of incremental contract costs. 
such as sales commission. And also, if your contract contains a right to return of the products, that could potentially reduce the amount of revenue you can recognize. And sometimes, as a manufacturing, uh, they would uh, provide the bill and hold arrangements for the customer. So what they do is that they would produce the product, they would bill the customer, uh, but they would retain the physical possession of the product until uh, it is convenient for their customer to pick up. And in that case, the business need, need to evaluate whether they have already transferred the control of the goods to the customer or they need to think about are they providing some extra custodial service to the customer and if yes that would um, constitute a separate performance obligation um, and very often a manufacturer would provide quality warranty to the customer and there could be a standard warranty which is simply to protect the customer from product defect. So we say this, is type, this type of warranty is the assurance type of warranty, and they usually do not constitute a separate performance obligation. But there are another kind of warranty, which is the extended warranty. Um, it usually can be sold separately from the product, separately from the um, from the standard warranty and very often they provide additional service. So this is the service type of warranty. So sometimes uh, and very often it, it can constitute a separately identifiable performance obligation. And so very similar to manufacturing companies, uh, retail business may also be affected by the new revenue standards in terms of a right to return the goods or quality warranty. So uh, in, in addition to that, uh, a retail business very often provide trade discounts or rebates or credit, surprise concessions um, and things like that. So these kind of uh, variable considerations, they would potentially reduce the amount of revenue. And also nowadays, a lot of retail business goes online. So if you do online retail business, you need to carefully evaluate when you have transferred the control of the goods to a customer. And usually, um, if a customer purchase something online, um, when the customer obtains physical possession of the goods, they obtain the control of the products. And the common practice for online business, online trading business, is that they would recognize revenue um, when the customer confirmed the receipt of the goods. And also, it could be a bit tricky when it comes to a right to return. And in China, there's a regulation to enforce the unconditional return policy uh, within seven days for goods purchased online. So when you try to estimate um, how much is the revenue derived from the goods expected to be returned, you need to consider the nature of your goods and also you need to see um, what is the return rate based on your past experience. And also when you conduct online trading, you need to um, decide are you a principal or are you an agent. So if you provide the goods yourself, say you purchase the goods from your supplier, you obtain control of the goods, and then you transfer the goods to a customer. Well, in that case, you are a principal. But however, very often if you do online trading, you simply arrange the goods uh, to be delivered from a third party to your customer. So in that case, you are not a principal, but you are agent. So whether you are a principal or an agent would affect the amount of revenue you can recognize. So when you are agent, you would usually charge um, service income or you would receive sales commission uh, for providing such matching services. Uh, so the revenue you recognize will be the net amount of the service fee uh, rather than the gross consideration of the products.
Any questions? We will find an expert to answer them. Drop your questions in the comments or send us an email, dx at dashwayconsulting.com.